Assalamualaikum and hi to everyone. So today we are going to continue into our second chapter, uh, which is the fundamental of logic. And in this uh, slide, I'm going to touch a bit on the subtitle or subtopic that you need to learn, which is the Boolean algebra. So to understand uh, the programmable logic controllers, and the application, uh, you must first understand the logic concepts behind them. Uh, so, in this chapter, I will explain to you the relationship between Boolean algebra and logic context symbology, and so that you will be ready to learn about PLC processors and ladder logic functions and diagrams later. So, these are the contents of this chapter. So, we are going to look into the overview of arithmetic logic and then uh, the Boolean. And then Boolean uh, algebraic identities with the properties and its rules. Okay, and then we are going to look to the De Morgan theorems and lastly the mnemonic code. You do not confuse yourself uh, between the Boolean and binary. Okay, so normally uh, binary concept only shows you how physical quantities of binary uh, variables that can exist in one or of two states that can be represented as 1 or 0. Okay, but normally Boolean uh, is actually an operation that is performed by digital equipment such as programmable controllers uh, based on the three fundamental uh, logic functions such as and, or, and not. And then this function combines the, uh, the binary variables to form a statement. Okay, and then in Boolean expression, normally each function has a rule that determines the statement outcome either true or false and a symbol that represents it. Okay, so basically by definition, Boolean is uh, referring to a data type that has two possible values representing true and false in that expression. While binary is referring to the base two numerical notation normally. Eh? Uh, and then normally it consists of two values, either 0 and 1. And then these digits are combined using a place value structure to generate equivalent numerical values. For example, like the binary convert to decimal, the binary convert to hex, uh, hexadecimal. The method of usage, normally Boolean is expressed by four main Boolean operators such as and, not, or, and XOR. Okay, while the binary is a number system which is also called as base 2 number system. Now, for example, for Boolean, it is an expression, for example, like 4 less than 5, meaning that 4 is less than 5. It is a Boolean expression as the result of 4 less than 5 is always true for this particular statement. While in the binary, the example is, for example, like the decimal representation of a binary number, which is 100100. So one, uh, once you want to convert it to the decimal representation, you have to use the, uh, the base 2 number system rule to convert it into the decimal of 36. So these are uh, the main um, difference between Boolean and binary. Okay, Boolean is normally an expression, logic expression, while binary is just a numerical notation. There are seven fundamental logic gates which can be combined later to become a combinatorial, combinatorial logic which can be used in the ladder logic diagram. The first gate is NOT or the inverter. NOT gates are special because the outputs are the same as the input. The input is just inverted to the opposite state. Okay, that is why it is called a NOT gate. Because when the input is true, then the output will not be true. There are seven fundamental logic gates and then number one is NOT, the inverter. So let us take a closer look at this node gate. The node gates are special because uh, the, the output are the same as the input. Okay, but the input is just inverted to the opposite state. That is why it is called a node gate because when the input is true, the output will not be true or false. Okay. The NOT gate is also called an inverter because it takes the value of the input 
and inverts it to the opposite state. Okay, this can be illustrated uh, with the truth table here for the node gate. The second uh, fundamental logic is AND gate. Okay, in this example, it is a two input gate. So in AND gate, the state of the output is then decided by the input. So with an AND gate, both inputs has to be true for the output to be true. Like here. Okay, it has to be true for the output to be true. In our real-world example, it might be two switches, okay, are the inputs and the light bulbs are the output. We have a two switches. Let's say this is the first switch and this is the second switch and then the, it is connected to a light bulb. So to turn on this light bulb, these two switches must be turned on, okay, because it is connected in series. And therefore, in combinatorial logic, the state of the output are decided immediately. So, as soon as the inputs are the same state, of the output will be set. If we turn on both switches, the light bulb will be turned on. The, the, logic, the symbol logic of engage is this. The state of inputs and outputs of the end gates can be illustrated in this truth table. With this truth table, uh, we can see the functionality and the states of the output with every possible combination of the inputs. So this is how you write the end gate in the formula. Either AB or AB or A dot B. The output Z will be true if the input A and B is true. Okay, either one of uh, the input is not true and then the Z output will be not true or false or zero. Now, we look into this uh, AND gate which has three inputs. It's just similar to the, uh, to the previous AND gate. The number of input is getting uh, bigger. Okay, you have three inputs here, but uh, the output of the Z is is depending on the all states or the on the true states of all inputs. Okay, if either of the states, either of the inputs has a zero states or false state, and therefore the Z output will be false. This is how we write down the formula for Z, which is equivalent to A, B, C, or A, B, C, or A dot B dot C. Okay, and then this is the uh, symbol of AND gate with three inputs, and this is the truth table. The NAND gate may have any number of inputs and one inputs, okay? For the output of the end gate to be logic 0, all inputs must be at logic 1. If any input is logic 0, the output is logic 1. It is inverts from the normal end gate. This is another way to build an end gate. Now we look into the OR gate. The OR gate may have any number of inputs and one output. For the output of OR gate to be logic 1, at least uh, one input must be at logic 1. Okay? And then, if all inputs are logic 0, the output will be logic 0. And then this is the expression or formula for OR gate. Okay? It has a symbol plus here. Now we look into the NOR gate. The NOR gate may have any number of inputs and one output. Okay, at the input, it can be two or more. For the output of a NOR gate to be logic zero, at least one input must be at logic one. If all inputs are logic zero, the output is logic one. So this is the uh, formula, the mathematical formula uh, for NOR gate. Okay, it has symbol plus with a line here. So when you have a, 
uh, a straight line over the formula, it shows that this is a logic with an N inverter. So this is another way, uh, this is another type of NOR gate with three inputs. Okay, but the logic here is similar to the two inputs logic. Okay, in order for the NOR gate to have uh, output with the logic one, all inputs must be zero. If one of the inputs has logic one, and therefore the output is zero. Okay, now we move to the next logic, which is the XOR. The XOR gate may have any number of inputs and one output. Common implementations have only two or sometimes three inputs. For the output of uh, XOR gate to be logic one, there must be an odd number of inputs at logic one. If you notice here, to be logic one at the output, there must be an odd number of logic one at the inputs. Okay, odd number. Otherwise, the output is logic zero. Okay, either or but, not both makes a one. So this is uh, how we uh, write down the formula for XOR in a mathematical expression. Okay, there is a circle with a plus symbol in the circle. This is another way how to express uh, a multiple input of XOR. Because XOR is normally based on two or sometimes three. But if you have more than uh, three inputs, you can use this kind of notation ataupun this kind of symbol. So A and B, you XOR here and then you XOR with C. Okay, the result of A and B here and then you XOR with the C. And then the result of that XOR, you XOR with D. And then you get the final result. Okay, now we move to the next logic which is the XNOR. The XNOR gate may have any number of inputs and one output. Common implementations have only two or sometimes three inputs, okay? For the output of a X nor logic gate to be logic zero, there must be an odd number of inputs at logic one. It is inverted from the XO, okay? In order for uh, the output to become zero, at least it must have an odd number of logic one at its input. Otherwise, the output is logic 1. Okay, and then this is how you express it in a mathematical equation by uh, drawing a straight line on this A, X, O with B. And this is a summary for all two inputs gates. Okay, A and B, if N, both are zeros and therefore the outputs are zeros. Okay, because it is a dot product. NAN, it is inverted uh, inversion of n gate, so it will become one, or both are zeros, and therefore a plus b is equivalent to zero. No is the inversion of or, so it will become one here. X or when both inputs are zero, and therefore the output will become zero. If you have an identical input, then the result will be zero. Okay, for X no, it will become 1 because it is an inversion of X O. And you can see the rest of this uh, logic, the output of these inputs, okay, based on the logic, the fundamental logic that we have here. Okay, you can study it uh, by yourself. Yeah? And then this is summary for all three inputs gate. Okay, now we look into example 1. If both the switches X1 and X2 representing the input, so let's say X1 here and X2 here, in the circuit are closed, the lamp Y representing the output is on. So this is Y. Okay, so from this uh, statement, we can see that the switches are organized in a series circuit. Okay, because uh, both 
switches close only then it will turn on the lamp okay and therefore it is an and gate and this is the truth table based on these two inputs so you can relate uh, the circuit illustrating uh, for this operation with the and gate okay and then you can write down the truth table based on this operation well in the second example x1 and x2 which are representing the inputs are arranged in a parallel circuit so that if either of the switches either of the switches is closed the lamp wire representing the output will be on okay so either of the switches is closed then lamp y will be turned on and therefore this is an or gate because the inputs are arranged in a parallel circuit okay so uh, and then you can write down the truth table for or gate okay so this is the circuit illustration of the or operation and this is the truth table okay now we move into the third example in this example the input switch x1 is arranged in parallel with the output so that the voltage flows through the lower path when the switch is closed okay when the switch is closed the y is not illuminated and the upper path when the circuit is open which is y is illuminated uh, or to be or turn on okay based on the circuit illust illustration we can see that when you close the switch x1 the current will move to the uh, way or to the path that is less resistant okay it has less resistant and therefore when the input x1 is closed and uh, the lamp is not illuminated because the current is flowing into this direction okay but when the switch is not closed or, or on when the switch is open okay when the switch is open so the circuit here is not connected it is uh, an open circuit here and therefore the current will flow through the lamp and therefore the lamp will be illuminated that's why when the switch is zero or open the output will be on right so this is the circuit illustration for not operation uh, this example uh, we will do it in the class later okay now we proceed with the boolean algebra identities okay the boolean addition is equivalent to the all logic function as well as parallel switch contacts okay so in this expression a plus zero is equivalent to a why so from here okay we can actually explain it by using a circuit okay when you have a circuit a plus zero which is these switches uh, arranged in a parallel circuit okay a and zero okay in this circuit if you can see that this is a zero value okay if uh, you turn on the switch okay the value is still here to be zero right and this is the circuit still open okay because the value is zero and therefore when switches uh, both switches are to are turn on and therefore the output here will become a okay because uh, the value here is zero okay that's why you you get a when you a plus with zero but in this case okay when you parallel an input with a normally closed input which is already one here okay before you start uh, pushing uh, the switches a the circuit is already being turned on with the value of one because the circuit here is connected through these switches that's why when you a you sum with one you will get uh, you will get one as the output okay different with this one then the next boolean addition that is equivalent to the all logic function uh, as well as parallel switch contacts is a plus a so a uh, the the same input okay of a and then the output will get a okay now we look into this uh, circuit equivalent circuit okay so you have a two switches here which is identical switch okay both are uh, the same input okay meaning that uh, if you turn a i mean turn on a so the output will be a okay and then if you turn this a the output still will be a and that's why a plus a is equivalent to 
A. In this case, we call this rule as in item potent. Item potent law in Boolean rules. Okay, so in this law, it says that an input that is n or odd with itself is equal to the input. Okay, this is what the item potent law says. An input that is n or sorry or with itself is equal to that input and that's why we have a, a, the same or equals input or the same inputs uh, like this case a plus a and then you will get the input okay you will get back the input and then the next uh, equation is a plus not a equal to 1 this one we call as a complement law it says that based on this law a variable Art with its complement is always equal to 1. Okay? If the variable is complemented with uh, its complementary value, and then the value is always 1. And this is the equivalent circuit of this uh, formula now we look into the n logic function okay the boolean multiplication is equivalent to the n logic function as well as series switch context okay so if you have an n function so meaning that uh, the switches is uh, the switches are arranged in a series circuit okay and then if you uh, n logic zero with any variable the answer will always be zero so this is the equivalent circuit of this law. So if you n any variable with 1, you will always get that variable back. Uh, so this is the, uh, the second n uh, logic function with the multiplication. If you multiply the variable with 1, you will always get that variable back. And then this is the equivalent circuit. And then the switches are arranged in a series circuit. So if you have a... Uh, multiple with itself we will always get a back okay similar to the or function if you add a with a you will always get a okay similar to the end gate if you multiply a with a you will always get the same variable of a okay bukan a kuasa 2 eh? not a uh, to the power of 2 no but you still get a and then if you times the variable with its complementary value, you will, guess, uh, you will always get 0. Okay, you can see here, if you times 1, and then the, inversion, the inverted value of 1 is 0, so you will always get 0. And then, uh, this is a summary of the Boolean uh, algebra identities. A plus 0 equivalent to A. A plus 1 equivalent to 1. A plus A equivalent to A. And a plus a equal to 1. 0 times uh, 0 multiply with a will get 0. 1 multiply with a will get a. a multiply with uh, itself will get a. And then a multiply with the inverted itself will get 0. Okay, so you have to remember this Boolean algebra identities. Okay, now we move to the Boolean algebra properties. Okay, so the first property is the commutative property of addition. So you have A plus B is equivalent to B plus A. Okay, so this one can be uh, explained uh, in this circuit. You have a 2 logic A plus B is actually similar to B plus A. You are going to get the same output. Okay, either A here in this circuit, if you uh, switch on A and then here you switch on here, here you still get the same output 1 here okay or if you switch on 
B, okay, and then here you switch on B as well, you will still get the same input regardless the arrangement of the circuit. Okay, so it shows that A plus B is equivalent to B plus A. The second commutative property of multiplication is A multiply with B is equivalent to B multiply with A. Okay, so A multiply with B is equivalent to B multiply with A. You are going to get the same output. So for example, in this case, you uh, close the switch A here and then you close the switch A here, you will still get the same output. Okay, so the system is not illuminated lah. Okay, so if you switch uh, both, okay, you switch both, then the lamp is on. So you get the same result. Okay, regardless uh, the different arrangement, uh, these switches in this uh, series occurred. Okay. Okay, next is the associative property of multiplication. Okay, you have three inputs. I mean, you have three uh, logic. Okay, A you times with B and C is equivalent to A times uh, A multiply with B and then you multiply with C. Okay, so this is the arrangement of the logic. Okay, first you multiply B and C and then later on you multiply A. And then in this uh, logic, the second combinatorial logic, you multiply A and B first and then later you multiply with C. You are going to get the same output here. Okay, now we look into the equivalent circuit. Okay. So, since it is a AND gate, all the inputs are actually connected in series. Okay, it's just that the arrangement of the switches. Okay, here you have B and C here. Okay, if you uh, change it to a, to a circuit or to a ladder logic diagram, it's actually the same thing. Okay, here you have the B and C here. Okay, you end this gate first. Okay, but in the second circuit, you end A and B first, right? But actually, if you put it in the in the ladder logic diagram, it will give you the same circuit arrangement actually. Okay, I mean almost the same circuit arrangement. Either if you switch A here, and you switch on here A, the output is still not turned on because B and C. B and C here are still open. Okay, unless you switch on everything. Then, both will have the same output. And that's why, uh, in the associated property, either A times uh, with B and C or A, B multiply with C will give you the same result. Alright. And now, we move to the, uh, the next uh, properties, which is the associative property of addition. So, in this uh, associative property of addition, A, and you have three inputs here, A plus with B plus C. Here, A plus B plus C. Okay. But if you arrange it in a ladder logic diagram circuit, in the all operation, all these inputs are parallel. Okay, are parallel. Right. Regardless, it's arrangement. But the inputs are parallel. So, either of the input turn on, the output will be Turn on. Same. You are going to get the same output. Okay. And that's why this one we call as the associative property of addition because of the arrangement of the inputs are in parallel for all operation or for addition operation. So if you uh, turn on here, the output already turned on. Still, you are going to get the same output. If you only turn on B here and you turn on B here on the second circuit, you still get the same output. The next properties uh, is the distributive properties. This is uh, the distributive property where A plus B, uh, A and with B plus C is equivalent to AB plus AC. Okay, so for example, in this uh, logic, you can see a uh, two different logic arrangement here. Okay, but if you move it into a circuit uh, equivalent diagram, you will you are actually get the same result okay for example in this case a you end with b and c which is b and c is a or operation which is in parallel circuit and here you have both a in both circuit okay but in parallel uh, arrangement 
Okay, because it is uh, separated by this or operation, right? So when you turn A here, then you turn A, only A here, you will get the same result because the output of the lamp is not on, okay? Because the circuit is still open in here, right? Okay, now if you turn on B, and then here you turn on B, so you will see you will get the same result. So the the lamp will be illuminated or turned on, and then here also the lamp will be turned on. Okay, that's why in the distributive property, uh, the same uh, circuit arrangement. I mean the the different logic uh, arrangement in this combined neutral logic will give you the same uh, circuit arrangement in ladder logic diagram. So to summarize. Uh, these are the basic Boolean uh, properties, which is commutative, okay, distributive, and associative. Okay, so this is a commutative. Uh, this is associative, associative, and this is the distributive. Uh, so when you, uh, so we are going to use all these Boolean algebraic properties and Boolean algebraic identities uh, in um, simplify. Okay, the Boolean expression before you start drawing your punya, your ladder logic diagram later. Okay, so I'll see you again in the next video uh, where we are going to continue with the D, uh, D Morgan theorem and mnemonic code. So I'll see you again.